Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we are going to look at how the L2 topology works and how we can configure it using an SSLI device and our lab setup. This is the basic L2 topology. We have a network with a client machine on one side. It's connected to an A10 device. The A10 device is in turn connected to a security device and the A10 is also connected to the gateway router. In this topology, the client can directly reach the gateway since everything is on the same subnet. In our network, the subnet is 30.99.0.0. The IP address for a client machine is 30.99.1.5 and the IP address for a gateway router is 30.99.1.10. The gateway has been specified on the client machine so that traffic can be directed towards it. There's no IP change required on the network since it's all in layer two and the security device can be in the bump in the wire mode. Logically, the network works like this. We have a client machine connected to the A10 device. Traffic from the client machine flows to the A10 in SSL format. It's received on the port 443. The traffic is decrypted and sent out in HTTP format towards the security device. The security device, once it's done, sends out the traffic back to the A10 device in HTTP format. The A10 device re-encrypts it and sends it out towards the gateway router in SSL format. We have two logical endpoints here. The first one is the inside machine. It has the IP address 3099037/16 and it's in the same subnet as the client and the gateway router. The second logical endpoint that we have is at this end and it has the IP address 30.99.0.27/16 and it's also in the same subnet. We'll be grouping this interface along with this interface together and giving it a single IP address. Similarly on this side we have these two interfaces, one coming into the A10 device and the other going out. These will be grouped together and given the single IP address. We don't need separate IP addresses for both these interfaces since everything is in layer two. The way we are doing it on our device is since we only have one A10 device, we are creating two partitions. One is called the inside partition. The other is called the outside partition. Traffic will come from the client machine to the inside partition it will be received on the ingress interface. We'll need a total of four physical interfaces on the A10 device. The first one is the ingress interface where the SSL traffic from the client comes in. Once the traffic is decrypted, it's sent out on the outbound interface towards the security device. Once the security device is done, the traffic will re-enter the A10 device, but this time it'll be entering the outside partition on the inbound interface. This is the third interface that we've used so far. Now here, the traffic will be re-encrypted and sent out on the fourth and final interface, which is the egress interface. This interface will carry out SSL traffic towards the gateway router. So in our lab setup, we have a client machine, which is a Windows machine on one side of the network. Then we have a 3230 connected in the middle and a server which is a Fedora machine on the other side of the network. There is no security device connected in the middle, but that does not affect the functionality of the network. We are going to try and establish an HTTPS connection from the client to the server using the browser on the client machine. And if the network is configured the right way, we should be able to see the test page from the server on the client's browser. Now that we've understood what goes on behind the scenes, Let's move on to the configuration and see how we can configure the SSLI device using the wizard and how we can reach the server from the client. So once we start the configuration, we're going to go to the management tab, enter our IP address, username and password and log in. We're logged in, so we move to the wizard tab. Here we can see that the default topology is L2 single path. This is the one that we are going to be configuring in this video. There are many options that we have, Please check out our introduction to topologies video to learn more. We click next and we are taken to the first part of our configuration. It's the decryption part. Here we have to specify the ingress interface. We're going to select one. We also have to select IP address. In our case, it was 30.99.0.37 slash 16. This is the address that we said will be applied to the two interfaces grouped together on this side. Now for the SSL certificate and key option, we can either select from the list of certificates and keys that we already have on the system, or we can create new. Let's go ahead and create a new certificate. 
we click on new here we have some options file name we're going to give it a random name let's say a10 networks test for common name I'm going to enter the same the valid days seem fine for the key we're going to select a 2k key organization can be anything email address once we click create we'll actually create a certificate and key pair which will be used later on in our configuration we go to the list once again and select the certificate and key that we just created moving on to the next option we have the outbound to security device this is the second interface that goes out towards the security device we select it as ethernet 2 and move to the next option here we are taken to the re-encryption part we are going to select ethernet 3 as our inbound interface and give it the IP address which we already decided was 30.99.0.27 slash 16 we also have to select the egress interface here it's ethernet 4 that's the interface that will be used for SSL traffic to go out to the gateway router and we also have to specify the gateway router which in our case is 30.99.1.10 we're done with that we click next we are taken to the bypass configuration options this is an optional step in our configuration we have three options here the bypass category list bypass domain list and bypass IP list for the category list if we click on this we we get a pop-up where we can select any categories that we want to bypass during the operation of our device we can select financial services and health and medicine here and click save for the domain list option if we click on this we we are presented with a pop-up where we can enter any words or phrases if those words or phrases are contained or compared to a URL those URLs will be bypassed so for example if I enter bank here any URLs with the word bank in it will be bypassed so anything like Bank of America PNC Bank will be bypassed we click Save the third and final option we have here is bypassed by IP list here we can either bypass using the source IP address or the destination IP address we can enter specific IPs or network addresses here for now I'm just gonna skip this step and click next once I click next we are taken to the confirmation page this is where we are presented with the whole summary of our configuration we can check and see if we've made any mistakes or if everything's the way it's supposed to be everything looks fine so I'm gonna click finish once I click finish I'm gonna be presented with a pop-up which shows me the whole configuration everything looks to be in order at this point you can either copy it by clicking the copy button the whole configuration will be copied to your clipboard and you can go to the CLI and apply the settings yourself or you can click apply which will apply your whole configuration to the back end of your SSLI device I'm gonna click apply here once we are done and everything has been applied we will be taken to the configuration page this page has some advanced options like explicit proxy proxy chaining we can also import certificates here if you want to go into the details of certificate management and how we can import or create certificates we have a separate video on that please go to the list of videos on my website or YouTube and you'll find the certificate management video there that's it for the configuration now let's move on to our Windows machine which is our client and see if we can access our Linux server on the other side of the network now I've opened a new Chrome window here I'm going to try and connect to the Linux server that we have on the other end of the network uh, if our configuration has worked I'm going to connect to the server using HTTPS and then the IP address of the server once I click enter we should see a warning like this since we've created our own certificate we are going to get this warning I'm gonna click on advance and proceed and you can see that we can access our Linux server and we can see the Fedora test page this means that our network is configured the way it was supposed to be and everything works if you want to confirm whether or not SSLI has worked you can click on the lock sign in the address bar and click on details that way you'll be able to see the certificate and in the certificate details you can see 
that the issuer was at abc at a10networks.com. That's the certificate that we created on the SSLI device while we were configuring it in the wizard. That means that the certificate has been forged successfully by the SSLI device. And you can see that it is forging the certificate for the server to the client. If you don't want to see the certificate warning, you have to go to the certificate management video and go into the details of how you can avoid those warnings. That's it for this video. I'd like to thank you for watching.